What's up everyone, it's Alon Darton. Hope you're doing very well. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the third component of the exposure triangle, which is shutter speed. But before we do so, let me bring in a special guest right now. Yo, Alon, man, thank you so much for having me. Ha, I got you with my intro then, love it. watching your ISO video and your aperture video and I tell you they have I've seen an improvement in what I've been doing with my videos I've been shooting some stuff on my mobile phone hey can you take a look at it for me right right now yeah right now yeah we can do that right now yeah why not just, just cool. check it out cool So what did you think? Thanks so much for sharing. That was awesome. This was shot with your mobile phone? Yeah, all of this was shot with my mobile phone. I've been able to use the ISO and aperture in my manual settings to get some of these things just right. And it's been very, very helpful. Thank you so much. Wait, there's more. So there's more? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Yep, so yes. we're gonna we're gonna dive into the rest of this video talk about shutter speed, and I'll catch you later. So I'm talking in terms of digital again and not actual film. Therefore, it's a single lens reflex opening to let light in and then closing. So conceptually, it's up and down, up and down, and up and down, letting light pass throughout. So at 24 frames per second, a good shutter is 180 degrees, which is a film term, but in the digital age, a good shutter would be 150th or 148. These numbers depend on the type of camera that you may have, and they may have either one of these values because there's not an actual shutter appearing in the camera, the manufacturer has set the calculations to allow the processor to be around about double of the frame rate to emulate the shutter. Typically, this is pretty standard. The 180 degree rule is a standard in the film industry and it explains the relationship between shutter speed and the frame rate when recording motion in a video. In the ISO video, I had stated one of the most important things related to exposure was to set your frame rate, and this is why. The doubling of the shutter speed, that of frame rate, is simply to mimic how we actually see motion with our eyes. If you cannot double it, then make it as close as possible. If you're shooting at 30 frames per second, and then your shutter speed would be double 160th, the shutter speed would match this rule, otherwise your video will look very strange and unnatural. So let's jump into some examples and we gotta show you how this all works. So for this example, we're gonna demonstrate the shutter speed and how it affects the overall exposure. Um, our settings is 2.8 for our f-stop or aperture and we're at 1 50th at 24 frames per second. So we just demonstrated how your shutter speed really does affect your motion of your video. And so one of the things that we saw um, at 1 10th, at 24 frames per second, that the motion blur seemed very unnatural. And then as we moved up to back to 1 50th, it appears the same exact way that our eyes do. And as we moved it up to 250, you can see that you lose a lot of the motion blur behind in the waterfall. And as we kind of scale up, to the 500, one over 500, then again, it was losing a lot of the motion blur itself. Also, we had to adjust the exposure because as we climb up into the shutter speed, then the image itself got darker. So the other thing that to compensate, if you want to keep your ISO where it is and your f-stop where it needs to be, so the one thing you want to invest is an ND filter. This allows you to keep your ISO and your aperture exactly where you want them to be. And I recommend having a variable ND filter where you can kind of um, cycle through the various stops 
and this allows you to keep your exposure exactly where you want it to be for your film or your video. Another important note about shutter is when you want more details, increasing the shutter speed along with the frame rate, it gives you more frames per second. Now, as you increase the shutter speed, there is less light coming throughout and it impacts exposure. For example, shooting at 60 frames per second and then raising the shutter speed by 2x allows the slowing down of the video in post. It also decreases the amount of light that's available to the sensor. To compensate, you have to either add in more light or adjust your other settings like your ISO to get the higher sensitivity. Personally, I prefer building in more light and sticking with my ISO. My recommendation is to research the project or the effect that you want to achieve and set the frame rate using the 180 degree rule. If adding in more light into the scene is not an option, then adjust your ISO or your f-stop, which all depends on the noise level that you're comfortable with. Adjusting the shutter outside of the 2x rule will really affect the look of the video. The best thing to do is to add in more light and leave the shutter where it is. I know that all situations will allow this, and if not, then make adjustments to the other variables. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please do leave a comment down below and share some of your experiences with either ISO, aperture, or shutter speed. And I'll leave a link in the descriptions down below of some of the other videos that are tied to the exposure triangle. And if you have not subscribed, please do consider doing so, along with hitting the alert icon to be notified when new content is available. And like always, stay safe, stay creative, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.